What if an inventor could develop something so extraordinary that it had the potential to influence the way entire industries do business in this country? What if this inventor could design a superstructural material that was so strong it would revolutionize the way engineers design and manufacture structural materials used in everything, from fire engine ladders to steel girders and skyscrapers? What if this technological innovation was so radical that it would do for the steel beam what the steel beam did for the wood beam of centuries past? A.J. Sestanino, the founder of Wingman Industries, has built such a beam. Spec testing was recently completed at the University of Washington, confirming his patent claims. A.J., tell us about your new super beam. The super beam and the testing at Washington State University proved super positive. We're excited about it. I have taken two beams, stainless steel high beams, making it impervious to chemicals and weather and outside elements. Welded two of them together, giving me a void. Inside that void, I have a carbon fiber rod. Carbon fiber is one of the strongest things known to man. Surrounding that carbon fiber rod, I have a two-part rubber compound that protects that rod from delaminating. The combination of the stainless steel, the rubber, and the carbon fiber puts the tensile strength of this combination at close to 5 million pounds per square inch. People have known about the strength of carbon fiber for some time now, but have not been able to find a way to use this knowledge in the fabrication of steel beams. AJ has found a way to do just that, to bring together the carbon fiber rod and steel beam in such a way as to harness their combined strengths in one unit, which he calls a super beam. His secret was simply to think outside the box. His idea of inserting a carbon fiber rod into a modified double I-beam with an epoxy buffer situated between the two materials was viewed with considerable skepticism. No one thought the epoxy buffer would work, but to their surprise, when an experimental beam was actually tested, the epoxy buffer outperformed everyone's expectations. AJ's design proved successful. The professors who tested the beam at Washington State University were so impressed with the results of the initial testing that they have sought additional funds to continue their investigation of this design. AJ, is there a market for such a beam? Is there a market for such a beam? Absolutely. The market is only limited by your own imagination. This new technology with this beam makes a beam, a load-bearing beam, five times stronger than anything we know of. Uh, we can implement it in highway beams or house beams, uh, bridge beams, uh, for the structure on a truck frame, uh, think of a piece inside of a, an, a car door. All right? Something comes in from the side and this fiber not allowing it to stretch. If a vehicle came in and this was in a door, it wouldn't be able to push it that way. So a lot of safety factors involved. Uh, entertainment uh, structures for uh, uh, the entertainment world, the, the, the scaffolding in the entertainment world would be uh, limitless. Uh, simple fire ladder trucks. The hook and ladders that we know today can extend to 150 feet. Uh, there's a possibility we can extend them, add strength to them, make them fire resistance up to 250, uh, 300 foot long. I mean, look at the reach, look at the potential. What can your new super beam do to improve the situation we have with our crumbling bridges? That's where we came up with the stainless steel idea. As far as a bridge beam goes, the, the beams inside of a, a bridge structure, number one being stainless steel, makes it maintenance free. Uh, a four inch beam could probably, uh, will more than likely, be able to replace a 24 to 36 inch girder. Uh, less material. Uh, we can probably even insert this beam through technology without stopping the flow of traffic on the bridge. Uh, it's, it's, it's just mind-boggling. 
Will your new super beam improve the roof supports for tunnels and mines? Absolutely. If it's stronger, it's going to hold up more weight. If it holds up more weight, those boys can dig deeper, longer, wider, uh, whatever the problems they're having with the wood beams or the screw system they got right now, it'll end up being immensely safer for those boys. What will it cost to make a carbon fiber beam? Carbon fiber beam, the cost of the carbon fiber beam would be probably uh, one third less than it would cost to put a steel beam up. Uh, steel weight uh, versus strength, a four inch beam replacing a 24 to 36 inch girder. Uh, so that would, uh, uh, the engineers would be looking for a beam of a certain strength and we'd be able to manufacture one a whole lot smaller in height and length and width uh, to give them comparable. So the amount of material that it would cost us to do the same would be a whole lot less. Can materials other than steel be used to make the shell for your super beam? Absolutely. We're, we're unlimited by what we can shell this carbon fiber with. Uh, there's products out there just like the staging and the scaffolding that's made out of aluminum. We can use the same process in aluminum to make it stronger. It could be put in PVC. Uh, it, you're only limited by your own imagination to how you get this in any building or industrial building uh, pr product to give it the same strength. What machines would a fabrication plant need in order to make one of your super beams? To make the super beam we're going to need actually three uh, three tools. If we can't get a steel manufacturer to put this double beam together, we'll need a seam welder all right, to zip the steel or stainless steel together. The second machine you'll need is to inject this rubber in, uh, a mold injection machine. And the third machine you'll need to manufacture the carbon fiber at the length that you need it is a pultrusion machine. Those basically are the three main machines that you'll need to manufacture this beam. AJ's beam was originally designed to be used with semi-truck trailers. He used the new beam design to strengthen the trailer beds so that they could carry much heavier loads. In addition, he wanted to be able to move the trailer bed into four different carry positions so he could easily handle various types of cargo. His patented design would replace four other trailer configurations. Congressman Good was interested in AJ's trailer design for use with the U.S. military. For example, using his new beam, AJ designed a trailer to replace the military's T-1000 trailer used to carry the Abrams tank. The T-1000 has many limitations that AJ's new design will correct. A.J. sums up his work with this statement. The original universities that we went to, after three or four years of back and forth, they flat out said, this can't be done. And we did it. We went ahead and did it anyway. This innovation will have an impact in many areas of our lives, areas that we haven't even begun to consider today. The only limiting factor in how this technology will be used is our own imaginations. As the word gets out, more and more businesses are expressing an interest in what this technology can do for them. The only remaining question is, do you want to be a part of it?